Hey everyone, I'm excited to show you guys my new Janimation Flash tools I created. These animation tools will help you speed up your animation workflow in Flash, and I really think you guys will really enjoy these, so definitely check them out. I made these tools free to use. All I ask is that if you're planning on using these tools in any project, large or small, please credit Janimation Tools by Jay Edry, or just credit using Janimation Tools. It only takes a second to add that in your credits, so please do that. I'd be very grateful. To install these tools, all you need is a copy of Flash, obviously. You need a copy of Adobe Extension Manager, which is free to download from the Adobe website, and a copy of these Janimation Flash Tools.zxp. And all you do is double click this, go through a few seconds of uh, prompts, and you're done, and you have it installed. So I have a copy of Flash open right now, and I'm going to be demonstrating these tools. Uh, the first hotkey that you need to know are the forward slash and the star key, which I'll be showing you right now. The forward slash will bring up this little uh, image right here, which will show you guys how to install the rig tool. And what the rig tool is, is over here, if you look in the bone tool, if you hold there, I created this rig tool. This tool will help you rig your Flash characters really quickly. So to install it, pretty much all you have to do is go to Edit, Customize Tools Panels, Bone Tool, Rig Tool, Add, OK, and you're done. So I'm going to close that off. And uh, also, if you hit the star key in the number keypad area, uh, that will bring up all my hockeys. And at a quick look, you could see that there's two different sets of hockeys. There's the keyboard hockeys and the number keypad hockeys. And pretty much, they're both the same. If you could see, they both have the same stuff on them, uh, including this middle part, which kind of use, is used by both. So feel free to use either the number keypad or the keyboard for my hotkeys. And just as a side note, for the keyboard hotkeys over here, you have to hold the control key for them, and that's just because the way Flash lets you make your hotkeys. So I'm just going to expand this out so I can show you guys the hotkeys a little bit more clearly. And I'm going to go ahead and start demonstrating the tools. So the first thing I'm going to do is, uh, let's say you have your character drawn out. And uh, you're really happy about your character, and you want him to rig him up, right? So you have a neck and a head and a body, and excuse these bad drawings, I'm just kind of quickly demonstrating my tool. So I'm going to use my lasso tool and just select the head area. And if I hit the insert key, and as you can see over here, the insert key uh, is the rig tool, you can see that right away I switch to the rig tool and I have the rig tool selected. And with the rig tool, you select the beginning of where you want the head to start and where you want the head to end, and that will rig up the head for you. It will also bring up a prompt asking you to label what you want that symbol to be, and there you go, it's done. And your head is rigged to where you want it to be and specified. So as another example, I'll do the neck. So I'll select the neck area, I'll deselect the head. Once again, hit insert for my rig tool, select the beginning and end areas, and it will rig that neck up right away. So there's my neck rigged up with direction and everything set up. And just to kind of clearly show it, I'm also going to rig the arm. Now the arm is uh, sideways over here, it's kind of going at an angle. So if I use my rig tool, it should rig it properly to that angle. And there you have it. It's rigged the way it should be. Now I also really quickly created this rig tool so that if you do make a mistake you can select the rig tool again and re-rig it so it's slightly different than it was so if you do make a mistake you can fix it up and that's all I want to show you for the rig tool so I'm going to delete all that and now I'll be demonstrating the quick tween. What the quick tween is as you can see it's a number seven on the number keypad over here. Let's say you created a head turn. So you have one head looking to the left right and you want it animated looking to the right so let's say on frame 35 it's looking all the way over to the right so I'm just gonna flip that over so what you could do is you can use the same symbol or you can make two different symbols for the head so it doesn't really matter how you create your symbols but I'm gonna rig this really quickly with my rig tool I'll name this head left and over here I'll name this symbol head right and so right now I just want to animate the head looking from the left to the right. So what the quick tween does is if you go select the middle area between those two and you press 7 for the quick tween hockey, that will bring up a prompt saying how strong you want your tween to be. So that's kind of like how powerful you want to be, similar to when you make it ease in at minus 100 or ease out at plus 100. But this is a little different. This will make the arc of the tween a little bit nicer, or so I think. So I'm going to go ahead and click 75 since I think that's a good number. Press enter to OK and as you can see it animated the head turn for me. And from here on in, you could do fancy stuff like move the head down. And uh, that will kind of create a different type of animation. So there you go. That was really quick. And just to demonstrate as well, you didn't have to make two different head symbols. You can use the same head symbol. And I'm going to move the head over and flip it over using the 9 on the keypad, as you can see in the hockeys. And let me just remove this tween. 
So right now I want the head to look from the left to the right, so all I do is click that center area. And once again, I'm using the same symbol for this animation as opposed to before where it was two separate symbols. Hit the 7 key, press enter, and there you go. You have the animation playing out. So let's go ahead and delete that out, and I'm going to remove tween. So right now I already went over the rig tool, the quick tween, the flip. Uh, I'm going to go over the custom eases that I created over here. And these custom eases are pretty nice because uh, they let you do uh, eases to kind of the next level where you can have more than just ease in or ease out. And I think the eases look a lot nicer. So if you select somewhere in the middle where you want the ease to be placed, you will see in the custom ease area, 4 would be ease in, so that's why there's an arrow pointing left. 6 would be ease out, that's why there's an arrow pointing out. 5 would just be a normal ease, which is just a 0 type of ease. And uh, 8 over here is ease in and ease out together. So uh, let's use 8 since that seems to be the one that's most uncommon. So if I select the area between those two, hit 8 on the number keypad. It's asking you how strong you want this ease to be. So I'm going to pick again 75 because I like that number. And if I play it, you'll see it'll go from slow to fast and back to slow in one ease. And that was really quick to do. And once again, if I select that area, and I can select an ease in. So I'm going to hit 4 for ease in. And once again, I can pick 75, or I can type in a different number, let's say like 60. And I press Enter to play that animation. It'll go from slow to fast. So there you have it. And I'm going to show you guys kind of what that tween looks like. So there you have it. And the arc is a little bit different than your normal ease in and out and ease out, and I like this arc a lot better for my animations. So there you go, I'm going to remove that tween, or actually I'm going to put in the same uh, ease in, ease out tween that I had. So I pressed 8 for the hockeys. So the next thing I want to show you guys is the smart key. Now this smart key is pretty awesome. What it does is, as you can see, uh, it's 2 on the, key on the number keypad. And what it does is, I'll give you a demonstration of how keen works in Flash without the smart key. So over here on the top layer, I have the exact same animation, but I turned it on the outline mode. So you can see this kind of purple outline around the character. It's kind of hard to see. If I hide this character, you see that purple outline. And that will always be there to kind of show you where the character should be. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a keyframe right in between the, the animation that I created. And there you have it, I have the keyframe over there. But when I play the animation now, you can see that this black symbol that I have isn't going the way it used to be. It kind of ruined the animation when I put that keyframe on there. So it did ruin the animation. So we don't want that. We want to keep the same animation and make sure everything is fine. So there you have it. Now if you use my smart key, so that's hotkey too. And now the animation remains the same. You didn't ruin anything. You didn't change anything. Everything is still the same. So you could do a lot of fun stuff with that. You can also go ahead and take that and kind of lower it a bit. And you still have that same ease going on, but now you have a different animation. Now, another thing I created, which is very handy, is if you look next to the smart key area, there's a smart key as next and smart key as previous. And that's symbolized by these left arrow and right arrow keys. So what that does is, let's say I have this last key over here, and that, and that frame, I have the character looking to the right, so I'm going to flip that over using my 9 key. So right now, if you look at the animation, it kind of does this weird flipping thing that you don't want. You want a straight ahead animation. I'm just going to delete that top layer because it's not needed anymore. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go select this little mid area here, and I want this key to look exactly like this key over here, but move the same amount. So if I use the 1 keypad on the number keypad, and I'd like to point out that the animation is still remaining the same speed. Now if I go to the next key over here, it's still doing that flip thing. So I want this key over here to be in this position, but look like the last key that we have in this animation. So that's number three on the keypad. And there you go. And now if I play it out, you have the animation playing. So that helps a lot, and you can create different animations with that, and uh, it makes the process a lot easier. So now I have uh, on the bottom over here the scrub key hotkeys, and that's zero and that period or delete key. So what you could do is if you had zero or period, that will scrub keyframes. It won't scrub frames by frame like you can do with the, the arrow brackets on the bottom. That would be single keyframes. So if you ever make an animation, you want to scrub between the keyframes, you don't have to go frame by frame. You could just hit the zero or the period key. And that will scrub, if you look on the top here, between the keys. So now we have everything covered between quick tween, flip, custom ease, smart keys, and scrub keys. The next thing I want to show you guys is bump. So what the bump over here does is it lets you bump your symbol up or down. Now this is a term that I kind of created when I made these tools. So what is a bump? I'm going to erase everything over here. So I only have one frame, and I could turn off my uh, tween for that one. 
So here's your symbol that you created. And sometimes in these symbols, you want to create a bunch of different symbols. So let's go ahead and press uh, F7 a few times. So you have a bunch of different symbols. And uh, so you have the head on the first symbol. And the second symbol maybe is a head looking up. Right? And the next symbol is a head looking down. And maybe the fourth symbol is a head with a hat on it or something. Right? And so on and so on. So let's go back out of that symbol. And sometimes you want to flip between those symbols and it can get frustrating to click on the symbol, go to your first, and change that number to two or three. So what bump does is it lets you just bump the keys really quickly by selecting your symbol and pressing plus or minus on that hockey. And as you can see, I'm bumping the, the frames between them. And if you look on your first over here, the number changes as well. So there you have it. That's what the bump hockeys do. So now we have everything covered over here on the keypad. Now I just got to show you guys scrub layers and batch select. So I'm just going to add a bunch of frames. And I'm going to extend my timeline over here. Now pretend that I have a bunch of stuff drawn out on all these layers. What uh, scrub layers does, and that's the page up and page down thing, is it scrubs up one layer and down one layer, which can be handy at times. But what's even better to use, when you have a character fully rigged up, you'll have the head on one layer, you'll have the neck on another layer, and under that you'll have the body and the arm, and you need all your symbols separated when you do animation, and anyone who's done character animation knows that. So what the batch select does is if I hit the batch select button, which is the home button, it will select all the layers in that frame. So that could be super handy if you have a character and you want to select the whole character and key the whole character out for your basic key frames. So it's very handy and I also created this uh, tool so that if you select multiple frames and you hit the home key it will select all those multiple frames. Now there's one more thing that this batch select uses and that's you're able to split between layers. So sometimes what I'd like is to have two characters in the same symbol so that I can animate them interacting together. But sometimes that could cause a problem because if I select one frame and I click the batch select key it will select both characters. So what you could do is if you go ahead in the layer and you label that layer underscore, that will be kind of like the blank frame that separates the two characters out from each other. So I can do that in a few places. Let's create one here as well, an underscore layer. So now if I select somewhere here in the timeline on the first character and I hit the home key, it will only select up to that underscore empty layer. And same over here, if I hit the home key, it will only select these, these three layers, which is between this underscore and this underscore. And that will help you distinguish between different characters they have in the same symbol and such. And I think that is all. So here are the tools. This is one of the first uh, versions of the tool. So there might be a glitch here or there, although I still got to fix a few of those. There are a few flash glitches that I might not be able to fix because uh, flash does have a bit of a redraw issue. But there you have it. These are my flash tools. I hope you guys enjoy using them and thank you for watching.